uh, we have a brand new edition of Do or Do Not. And we're out here in Santa Monica, and the sun is going down over there. Oh, look at that. Look at the focus on that. It changed. Um, but, uh, and yeah, there's the, there's the famous Santa Monica Pier. It may be a little loud because it's windy out here, and there's lots of people around, so we'll see how long I last talking to myself. But I wanted to do a review of the movie Palm Presents the Greatest Movie Ever Sold, and that's the, the actual name of the movie. It's a Morgan Spurlock's new movie, and you might know the name Morgan Spurlock from uh, the movie Super Size Me. And this is his latest documentary, and uh, it takes a look at product placement in movies. Which is really interesting because he wanted to not only kind of, not expose, but at least delve into the world of product placement in movies and how much it's worth and how much money is made from that and the co-sponsorship of stuff and, and the attention it brings on both ends to the, the advertiser and the movie. So what he did is he went out and funded the entire movie with product placements. And that's why it's called Palm, Present, Palm Wonderful Presents, the greatest movie ever sold. Um, I'm going to give this movie... A do with with a caveat. You, you don't have to see it in the theaters. Um, there's no... Gosh, it's beautiful. Check this out. Look. It's just the ocean and, and the sunset. It's awesome. But um, you, you could wait till it's on Netflix. You could wait till it's on video. Video, DVD, whatever. You know, Super 8. I don't know. I'm kidding. Um, there, there's not a lot of reason to see it in theater. There's, there's nothing big and extravagant other than just having something to talk about. And maybe I'll just talk to you guys while you while you look at the beautiful sunset. Um, what the movie does well is it, it's a lesson in marketing and it's a lesson in advertising. So if you are a business major, if you're a marketing major, if you're in new media like I am, this, this is a must see at some point because um, not only does it, it talk about why this advertisement stuff works and, and is in movies, but kind of the reason how you make it happen and kind of the struggles that even someone who, you know, like Morgan Spurlock, who has a name for himself, had a hard time, at least at, at the beginning, finding people to come on and sponsor his movie. And he only wanted like a million and a half bucks, which is, is nothing. Um, and it's a very interesting look at the process. And part of me thinks, and, and the movie's extremely meta because, you know, it does that thing like in Spaceballs where they're like, well, let's go back to now and we are now and here and this is happening now. And there are movies in the movie where it's like, this is going to be in the movie, right? And obviously it is. And at the end of the movie, there's a segment from Jimmy Kimmel, which is taped literally a week before the movie premiered. So I can see some frantic guy running a piece of video from Jimmy Kimmel all the way down to um, wherever they were editing this movie and having to like edit it in in time for them to get it out and into theaters in time, which is kind of crazy. But in, in a sense, you know, no matter what... Morgan was going to say about products being in movie, there was going to be press generated and part of it was just the fact that all he needed was one and when Palm signed up, then you could see, because previously there had been a lot of resistance, like, oh, we're not interested we don't care, you know, what is this about and as soon as Palm signed up, everyone's like well, if Palm did this, we might as well jump on this bandwagon too, so he nails Mini Cooper and Hyatt Hotels and JetBlue you know, all these bigger sponsors that really had no interest ahead of time but because someone did and because in advertising world there's no such thing as bad press it, it worked and that was the kind of thing is like even if he had said horrible things about these brands which he didn't he, he did it in a very fair and, and respective way people were going to be talking about this and for the fractions of advertising dollars that these brands actually spent which is probably a couple hundred thousand dollars at most because Palm presumably spent a million bucks so these other seven or eight advertisers spent less than a hundred thousand each uh, of the remaining five hundred thousand that he needed to raise so it's an amazing deal look seagulls look at them look at them amazing um, and it's just it's amazing to think that that's how advertising works and you know as much as he criticized McDonald's and supersized me it, it was a movie that advertised McDonald's because it was an hour and a half worth of people seeing McDonald's and McDonald's propaganda over and over and again. And I'll be the first to admit, I knew after that movie how horrible McDonald's was for me, and I knew before how bad it was for me too. We're just going to stand here with the, with the sunset in the background. But what was the first thing I did after I got out of Super Size Me? I went and bought a cheeseburger for McDonald's. Yeah, I know that. It's ridiculous and it's stupid and it's idiotic. And I don't 
I'm not proud of it, but I went. It was subconscious advertising that I was like, I really want a cheeseburger. And there's something to be said about that and, and how marketing works that way and how product placement is so integrated into everything and every part of our lives. Like I'm sure at some point during this video, there was like a little pop-up ad that came up and said something. Um, and, and that's the world we live in. And he was proving a point that, hey, I can get my movie completely 100% funded by selling out this movie essentially. But you know, in a lot of ways, I don't think he completely sold out. I think he was able to tell most of the story that he wanted to. You know, obviously you can tell there were some things in editing and I really would have, would have wanted to see more of the pre-planning that went into the movie, like in terms of, okay, what happens if we get this sponsor? Where are we gonna put them in, in, in the timeline of the movie? Because it's very strategic what ends up on the screen and you can tell that there was a lot of forethought about, well, if we get this person, it goes into this spot of the movie and, and there wasn't a lot of that pre-planning on the, on, the, on the screen. It was more the actual once we got into the thick of it, once he started cold calling companies and saying, hey, sponsor my movie. So in a sense, you know, he had to cater some to his advertisers because of the contracts that he had. And at the same time, he was able to just give a very good insight into what it takes to film and produce and fund a movie because, you know, these are things you, you, you're like, how the hell did Pepsi or Dr. Pepper team up with Iron Man to dump product and coke cans and stuff like that in our faces when Iron Man came out and it's just a behind the scenes look for a lot of us who are filmmakers and, and in new media it's just like how do I even begin conversations with brands that will be even interested in putting their name behind my film or my product so it it, it works it, it really works and Morgan Spurlock is the type of guy who's willing to do ridiculous things and make more difficult choices in the name of you know, not in a Michael Moore kind of way. He's not as in your face in, you know, wanting to, to push your nose in it kind of thing. He's just kind of a matter of fact, this is, this is how it goes. And I appreciate that then. And I appreciate Michael Moore for a lot of different reasons, but it's, you know, we've definitely entered a new age of documentary making and filmmakers like Morgan. So, you know, that said, I, I think it's worth it. Go out, see it. Not a lot of people are going to see it because it's a smaller movie. I think here in L.A. it's only playing in the Arclight Theater, so you may, if you don't live in L.A., have to search for this movie. But definitely when it comes out on Netflix, um, give it a watch. So it's been up there all the time, so go subscribe. Check out the last uh, Do or Do Not, the Fast Five review, and then uh, over there, the latest Doctor Who review. And we'll see you guys later. Adios.